this is what I think is one of the subtitles of the patient safety. Qualifications will hi hire you because you are highly qualified. You are a urologist, board certified, and you can go anywhere and have a great job. But the behavior will fire you. And this is because the landscape of the healthcare changed. Uh, there's more uh, input from the business side. And uh, like I told several people, I had to start an MBA to speak a new language uh, of ROIs, BEOs, blah, 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 and try to understand what the managers were saying and trying to follow and each number in the Excel spreadsheet uh, justifies something when I wanted resources. I'm not asking you to know all this, but you definitely need a manager. I'm pretty sure you have a manager in your practice. Who does have a manager in your practice that is not a physician? Everybody. So you, that's the reason why I love this audience. Everybody is very, very smart. So behavior can be from yelling to uh, uh, sexually harassing or, uh, or not paying attention. Um, and those behaviors uh, will basically put you on a limbo, uh, uh, on a way out of this institution. And even that you don't go out of the institution, the amount of stress and he headache is just unbelievable. And who already suffers something like that, um, it is terrible. And I was part of the uh, Medical State, State Board of Colorado, uh, and the governor, Hickey Looper, appointed me. And I, I gotta tell you, there are some sad cases that you know that it is not fair for the people that were involved. So we start with the history, uh, why this is necessary. Well, we come with the concept that we should not, uh, ha uh, uh, not uh, uh, harm anybody, and that's our principle. Primo non lo sceri, and from that we go to, in 1982, there was this big thing on TV, the 2020 uh, the television show that's still in, and the uh, Deep Sleep. And uh, it was about some accidents that the anesthesiologist had, the mistakes and problems. And it created this awareness to the American public on a very hot topic of uh, medical errors. 6,000 Americans will suffer brain damage. Then they did this big announcement with the background music like us, you know, we were killing people. And that caught the attention of a lot of uh, uh, the audience. Then in 83, the British Royal Society of Medicine and the Harvard Medical School jointly sponsored a symposium uh, about the anesthesia, death and injuries, the complications and the stats, and um, some recommendations how to avoid it. And in 84, the famous ASA, the Anesthesia Society of Anesthesiologists, they created not only that scale of people going to hernia, healthy, ASA1, to those that are almost dying and needed a a triple uh, uh, A corrected on an 80 year old uh, uh, diabetic uh, female. Uh, those are S4. And uh, it started to create this awareness more and more about the complications and the medical errors. This started to be reported. And the Australia uh, government and the group, I, it was the most, I think, influential in terms of getting that data and started to really clearly uh, point out the medical errors. In 99, uh, 1999, then we had this uh, um, historical uh, 
seminal uh, paper, or it's more than a paper, it is a report uh, called the Air, uh, To Air is Human, Building a Safer Health System. This came from the Institute of uh, uh, Medicine, the IOM, the National Academy of Sciences, and it showed that up to 98,000 preventable deaths annually <coughs> due to medical error in the hospitals could have a way of be pre prevented. 7,000 preventable deaths related to medication errors uh, alone uh, can, could be prevented. Within two weeks of the report's release, the Congress hearing and uh, the President, they mandated that the study of feasibility and implementation reports recommendations uh, should be performed. And since then, a lot of things happened, but if you see 99 and now we're 2019, and Tim and I, we did the first presentation to the board, the uh, American Board of Urology. It didn't go extremely well because uh, there was no data. Uh, in all these courses, there were only two surgeons, me and him, uh, and nobody else. Everybody was, they were from anesthesia, uh, or internal medicine or pediatrics. So we put the core curriculum and this core curriculum actually emphasized what we were, uh, our job was to put a core curriculum in the website and I'll show you in a second. But the patient safety became a huge thing, a new discipline where people ca could just study patient health and uh, that patient safety uh, created a quality. And then the movement now is to have a chief uh, quality and safety officer. And that is the person that will oversee all the near misses, the bad outcomes, and all the medical errors that are related to that institution and uh, they, can, they can be part of NISCU and uh, a uh, the American College of Surgeons have the database and now the hottest debate is what the difference between quality and safety. Quality being the outcome that are positive and safety that usually is how to prevent the, qual the, outcome that, the outcomes that are negative. So, Coming from all that history, what we tried to do at the AUA is, as you can see, this was the first core curriculum that Tim, uh, Tim and I, we put together for the AUA uh, core curriculum in the AUA ac Academy, and it's under ethics. It's not under any other tab, so sometimes it's very hard to find it, but you can see some of the things that we talk. And then it took about eight years to develop these three groups. One that was uh, chaired by John Stoffel, um, colleague that is brilliant. He was my colleague in the uh, second AUA leadership uh, group in 2006. And they talk, uh, they wrote a white paper that is in the, on the website of the AUA talking about the preoperative uh, care. Then I was part of the second group with Kristen Schrauser that did a great job about talking about the intraoperative considerations and this goes to music distraction, positioning, um, how to define leaders and how to communicate to the colleagues and uh, be really a, what we call the new generation of reasonable uh, surgeons. Nowadays, great surgeons that will scream and have a behavior, uh, they are not considered uh, humanly civilized. They will not be uh, accepted in the, like the past. Uh, you can be a great surgeon, but your behavior has to be uh, significantly civilized so you can deal with management. And 
Also, Angela Smith, who is the Assistant Secretary for uh, South America, helping John Destad and myself, uh, she took care of the post-operative care. And these are all papers that I don't, I'll, I'm not gonna go into uh, on this part, but I will uh, tap on some of the things uh, later. There are some, I'm just gonna leave you with a few thoughts before I finish. The culture of shame and blame is gone. Near misses have to be reported. Just culture, the culture of just is implemented in all hospitals and I hope it is your, yours. Patients and staff safety is pivotal for a successful institution. And I'll talk about systems thinking and how it's, imp it's important for, the, uh, for you to develop this kind of behavior and the high reliability industry. So I'm gonna do this test in terms of uh, what human factors influence, how it influences. Can you read the color, not the word, and see if you can efficiently do 100% of the time? Okay, who was able to accomplish that? Very difficult. So that's the human factor.